Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com. On Twitter at GoVeganRadio, GoVeganRadio with Bob Linden on Facebook. I almost don't know where to begin here. Um, there's so much, so much. Um, as I uh, saying, I, I, I was initially uh, excited about direct action everywhere. Uh, young activists were standing up to the humane meat myth, initially with the campaign uh, against Chipotle. Um, and I thought, uh, well, this was great. You know, I, I, I interviewed Wayne Shun a number of times on the show, supporting the opposition to humane meat. I even joined DXE for a demonstration in San Francisco where we were at Union Station with a captive audience of hundreds of shoppers standing there watching us and then you know for about 20 minutes straight we chanted what do we want animal liberation when do we want it now over and over and over again i became a bit frustrated as it uh, went along uh, in that uh, you know we weren't really telling spectators what we wanted them to do to achieve animal liberation uh, we told them uh, you know, we wanted it. We told them when we wanted it. Uh, and uh, on and on we droned. Um, you know, I'm sure some spectators were giving us a thumbs up. Hey, yeah, we're with you. We, 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 you know, we want animal, animal liberation too. Uh, you know, that would be fine. You want it now? Well, fine with us. Good luck. We're going to go have our hot dogs now. Um, and uh, we didn't tell anyone how to achieve animal liberation. We didn't tell them to go vegan. I thought this was an oversight. I, you know, the young activists, you know, new to demonstrations, maybe, maybe if it were suggested. You know, I had no idea that avoiding asking people to go vegan was a primary DXE strategy. Uh, that in itself would be extraordinarily mind-blowingly disturbing. And then DXE founder Wayne Shun goes back to the East Coast, uh, and he's a house guest of Bruce Friedrich, the, the poster boy for humane meat, an animal betrayal specialist whose expertise is deception. Um, he's a cheerleader for the Humane Society of the United States and someone who just loves eating at Chipotle. You want to make Bruce Friedrich happy, give him coupons to Chipotle. Um, I thought that Bruce and Wayne made for strange bedfellows, and then to make things worse, Wayne ends his trip saying that he wants to he wants DXC to make the work of Bruce Friedrich and those other groups exponentially more effective. Um, so I, I suppose Wayne may have expected a reaction from me, since uh, he he knows that a few years ago I traveled 3,000 miles uh, to ARCon, the so-called Animal Rights Conference, with the sole purpose of protesting it, showing that uh, Farm, the organizer, couldn't differentiate animal advocates from animal killers. And uh, I thought I thought that Wayne could, and Wayne would be different, but. Um, Wayne wanted to make those groups exponentially more effective and um, which, you know, they are, they are meat salespeople. They are the meat industry. And then I find that the sloganeering of direct action everywhere is probably making their work more effective also because we're not told, we're, again, we're not given any action. I don't know what these slogans mean. You know, it's like, uh, um, you know, it's not food, it's violence. Okay, I understand that. What should we do? Go vegan? No, no, no. That's consumerist issue. Um, animals uh, do not want to die. Um, animals are not ours. Until every animal is free. What do these things mean? What are they asking you to do? Uh, I see DXE is rescuing chickens now, We're rescuing individual chickens, advising people to go rescue a chicken instead of uh, saying go vegan and to, to rescue nine billion chickens. And... Uh, so anyway, I guess Wayne Shun is here, my guest, and uh, perhaps, Wayne, you can respond to any of that. And I just also want to mention one comment from a, a DXE um, uh, member who said to me, quote, we don't use the word vegan because it's a movement meant to help people see that the pets they love as family are no different than the animals um, on their dinner plates. DXE would love it if people went vegan, but 
Society first needs to see animals as equals before we can expect people to go to veganism. We will be waiting a long time, Wayne Sean. We'll all be, um, you know, drowning in melted glacial waters if uh, if we're waiting for that. And I don't know. Is 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 the next slogan on the sign? You know, we want you to go vegan, but hi, Wayne. Hey, Bob. How are you? What an introduction. It's been a while. Well, it, it, it has been a while. It, it has been a while. So, uh, right. And, uh, I've always appreciated the opportunities you've given us to explain what we're about at Direct Action. Everyone, I appreciate the opportunity today. And I haven't talked to Gary, I think it's over 10 years. So I'm really excited to talk to him, too, because honestly, he's one of my mentors. He's one of the people I admire most in the animal rights movement. I think he has a lot of incisive criticisms of the animal rights movement, including us. So I'm excited about being on the show. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for thank you for being with us and uh, quite an introduction. You want to pick out something to to to, to, yeah, to so which you might there. respond? I, I know, it's, but there, there's so much going on and so little time. So go yeah, for you it. You know, Bob. The key thing is, I just want to emphasize to you, to Gary, and to all your listeners that DXC and I believe in veganism. We believe in veganism fully. Our house is a vegan house. At many of our demonstrations, we talk about veganism extensively. But we don't believe veganism is enough on its own. Because veganism is ultimately about what we use and don't use, what we buy and we don't buy. It's not about taking action for animals. And action for animals is what animals need, what the animal rights movement needs to grow, to strengthen and build to the point that we can save those nine billion chickens. So let me just give you an example, right, that I think illustrates the point. Say you come across a guy who's beating a dog with a stick on the street. He asks you, hey, wanna join me? Isn't this fun? I think there are three things you can say. The first thing you could say and the worst thing you could say is, sure, why not? You're beating a dog, so why don't I join you? After all, it looks fun. I mean, I think all of us agree this is unethical. Frankly, welfareists think this is unethical, right? We shouldn't be abusing animals. The second and slightly better answer is, no, no, no. I am opposed to that, so I will not personally participate. And this, Bob, is veganism. Veganism is non-participation in violence. But there's a better answer. And the answer that we have at Direct Action Everywhere, which is that we must actively intervene to stop violence. That nonviolence is not just not participating in violence, but actively intervening to try and stop it. And I came on the show today to ask you, Bob, to support us in sending that message to the world. And you asked us, what is the thing that we ask the public on every one of our leaflets, at every one of our demonstrations, and all of our materials and videos, we ask people to take action for animals. Because veganism is not the moral baseline. Activism is the moral baseline. Okay. Um, we're joined by Professor Gary Francione, who, uh, who I'm sure uh, has a lot to say today, right? How are you today, Professor well, Francione? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Hello, Wayne. It's, uh, I think I met you at the University of Chicago. You were still a student, and I was giving a talk at the, uh, at the university, and we met, and I, as I recall, we had an interesting discussion. Um, yeah. but, but, Wayne, let me ask you a, a, a question. You're at Chipotle, and you're doing one of your events. And somebody comes up to you and says, you know, this is really interesting. Um, what do I do? What, what, what should I do? If, you know, if I'm, if I'm, like, listening to you and I'm interested, what do you want me to do? What, what should I do? What do you tell them, Wayne? We tell them that we believe that animals ought not be used for any purpose, but the only way for us to stop this entire system of violence is for us to get active animals, to take collective action, to build a movement. But so this wait, is the difference think, between... Yeah, go ahead, Greg. <laughs> You don't, you don't think that going vegan for ethical reasons because you reject on philosophical grounds, political grounds, the commodification of animals, just as we once rejected and still do, I hope, the commodification of human beings and human slavery. You don't believe that that's activist? I believe veganism is non-participation with violence. And I think this is the definition that Donald Watson gave in 1944. It's a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude exploitation. Not that it actively tries to stop exploitation, but it seeks to exclude it. And what I'm suggesting today is that if you go back to King's work, Gandhi's work, what they said was nonviolence is not just not participating yourself in violence, it's taking an active role. Well, but Wayne, Wayne, why isn't advocating veganism an activist thing to do? So in other words, it's not just that I'm going to go vegan, but I'm going to spend a great deal of my time and energy and resources educating other people so that people stop regarding animals as commodities. I mean, I've read some of the things you've written about the consumerism of the vegan movement. And, Wayne, 
Look, I, I'm not. I, I'm not challenging your sincerity. I, I, I'm sure that you believe sincerely what you're saying, but I simply can't believe what I've been reading. I mean, I've spent a good part of today reading a lot of DXC things, and your characterization, for example, of Donald Watson as as des- designing or, or or promoting veganism primarily as a consumer issue, I, it, it just took my breath away. Wayne, have you ever read Donald Watson? I mean, Donald Watson was a pacifist during the Second World War. He was a politically progressive person. And he, I mean, this is, here's a quote from Donald Watson. Um, it is, um, let me get it. Sorry. Okay. Um, we can see quite plainly that our present civilization is built on the exploitation of animals just as past civilizations were built on the exploitation of slaves. And we believe the spiritual destiny of man is such that in time he will view with abhorrence the idea that men once fed on the products of animals' bodies. He also didn't wear them. He also gardened in such a way so that he did not kill creatures who were living in his garden. You're saying that that... I I cannot understand how you could characterize that position as consumerist that basically it's about personal choice and that there is no no strategic basis. Because I that's something else that I've read that you've said, that the vegan movement has no strategic basis. I, 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 I'm, I'm stunned at that. I have no idea what that means. What does that mean? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very perplexed. Okay, so well, we will take our uh, first break in this discussion. Uh, we'll continue with Professor Gary Francione and Wayne Shun of... Direct action everywhere on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com. Continue on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com, on Twitter at Go Vegan Radio and Facebook, Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden, uh, talking to Professor Gary Francione and Wayne Shun, uh, founder of Direct Action Everywhere. We're talking about the issue of going vegan, the greatest moral action of our day, the, the most important direct action for animals, the environment, for, for, for everyone that one can take. And Direct Action Everywhere, which is a group supposedly representing animals, is dismissive of it as just mere consumerism, uh, which really doesn't make sense to me. But even if it is, though, uh, if uh, our dollars weren't spent on meat, dairy, fish, and eggs, um, then I bet animals wouldn't be killed to become meat, dairy, fish, and eggs. Don't you think, Wayne and Professor Francione? Wayne? So, Bob, I... I just want to respond very briefly to what Gary said about Donald Watson. I admire Donald Watson immensely. As the founder of the Vegan Society, as the man who coined the term vegan, he has been immensely important to the history of the animal rights movement. And if we could create 100,000 Donald Watsons around the world, then we could change the world overnight. The problem is that most vegans are not Donald Watson. They do not feel empowered. They do not feel confident. They do not feel like they can speak openly and directly about animals the way you do or Gary does or or that Donald does. Did. And our main mission at DXC is to create people like Donald Watson. The problem is the vast majority of vegans do not have that sort of confidence. And what we need to do is empower these people to take action for animals beyond just buying cupcakes and buying tofu. Wait, 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 there's a wait, powerful wait. historical example. If I could just finish this one thought, Gary. There's a powerful historical example from the anti-slavery movement. And I know, Gary, that you've used the anti-slavery movement as a metaphor for our movement as well. But starting in 1826, there was actually a campaign to stop the slave system by using the same methods that vegans use today. In other words, to start the system by stopping consumer damn demand. The first slave-free product store opened in Baltimore in 1826 with high hopes. They were asking the public not to buy any products made with slave labor. But it is rightly now seen by historians as a complete failure because it failed to mobilize people to any sort of political action and failed wait, to even wait. sustain itself. And I'm just going to finish with one quote. And this is a quote from William, William Lloyd Garrison, who's an abolitionist who I think you respect immensely, Gary. Here's a quote, and this is from Lawrence Glickman, who's a historian at Cornell. 
Free produce shoppers, Garrison said, had a, quote, pretext they do nothing more for the slave because they do so much in the exhausting efforts to find non-slave made goods and the uncomfortable job of wearing and eating them. In other words, even if it were possible to divest oneself of all slave made goods, the quest for what one free produce advocate called clean hands diverted energy from the anti-slavery struggle by shifting the focus to what amounted to a selfish obsession with personal morality. We have to overcome the selfish obsession with personal morality and start taking public, political, and collective action to stop violence everywhere. Well, uh, Wayne, Wayne, yeah. um, let me say, I mean, I could, I could spend two hours responding to that, but I don't have that time because we're going to have ads in a minute. But um, let me just say this to you. If you think that what the abolitionist movement is about is about cupcakes, then I don't know what we're, I'm, I don't know why I'm wasting my time having this discussion with you. If you think that what we're doing at the abolitionist, the grassroots abolitionist movement is engaged on a crusade of personal morality, you know, it's really interesting to me. You've got all this stuff in your materials, Wayne, about how this is not just, you know, that, that, that basically people don't make decisions based on, you know, rationality and personal, you know, personal morale. You know, they, they don't make, they're not responsible for making their own decisions. Their decisions are made for them by, you know, are, are shaped by social forces. That sounds like Melanie Joy and the, you know, it's all invisible. There's an invisible system. No, there is not an invisible system, Wayne. The system is animal welfare, and you support it. I was shocked today to see you supporting animal welfare reform as long as it's sustainable. We could talk about that, too, Wayne, because if you understand anything about economics, you have to know that the property status of animals makes animal welfare completely unsustainable. It makes it complete. It, it dooms it to failure. It must fail. So, you know, look, I don't look it, direct action everywhere is a new welfare group. It doesn't matter to me, Wayne, whether there's one more or less new welfare group. All of the groups out there, all of the, all of the institutional groups out there, of which yours is one, are all basically new welfare groups. So just like the animal welfare, you know, just like PETA and compassion over killing and mercy for animals, they tell us advocating for veganism isn't activism. What activism is is writing us a check so we can promote welfare reform or we can tell people that wearing fur is worse than wearing leather or wool and all that sort of stuff. And so that's what we have with, you know, now direct action everywhere is saying, oh, no, activism isn't constantly educating the public about the need for veganism. Activism is going into Chipotle and saying it's not... We need, food, to, we need to take a break. We'll continue with Professor Francione and Wayne Shun coming up. Welcome to the second hour of Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com. We're syndicated by the Genesis Communications Network live Sundays, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can click listen live at GoVeganRadio.com where this show will be archived. We have hundreds of archives that you can hear there. Today we are discussing the actions of Direct Action Everywhere with Wayne Shun, its founder, and Professor Gary Francione. Um, when I learned that Wayne uh, was sympathetic to the larger groups whom I can't find, I can't differentiate between animal killers, animal advocates, they, all of these groups seem kind of the same to me, and I wrote a scathing uh, expose on it, and then Wayne wrote a response, I think it was called uh, Walls and Bridges or Bridges and Walls, um, and Liz, uh, Lynn uh, McKenzie, Linda McKenzie on Facebook wrote uh, about Wayne's response saying, Shun's characterizing Bob Linden's sober, reality-based assessment of the large welfarist groups as a cynical view, whether accurate or not, 
and with overwhelmingly irrefutable evidence that it is entirely accurate, reveals Shun's true colors as being on side with these groups, as being just another new welfareist. In his view, even if Bob is right in his damning indictment of these groups, they are to be supported and courted. Any real dissent is verboten. Um, so, Wayne, you said that you support uh, incremental welfare reforms. I'm wondering um, which ones you have supported in the past and which ones you support now? Bob, so we have said we support incremental change. That is very different from saying we support welfare reforms. In fact, we do not support welfare reforms. We are against all regulation of an industry. And I understand the concern that you and Gary were raising because I've been finding the same concern, for the same concern, for the past 10 years of my life. I have, in fact, walked inside one of these certified humane farms, and I've seen the deception these corporations, the government, and even some animal advocacy groups are trying to impart in the world. And it's discouraging to see animal rights groups working hand-in-hand -hand with these corporations. I agree completely. But the statement I made, Bob, was not that I supported regulation of an inherently violent system, a system that I agree can only be made better through abolition. I agree with that. The statement I made was that regulation is going to happen on its own and it will be more effective if we have a powerful movement for total animal liberation. So the best thing a welfarist could do, even if you are a welfarist, is actually to be an abolitionist. That was a statement I made and I think there was a little bit of misunderstanding and uncertainty about it, but I hope it clarifies what I actually meant by that statement. Well, I, I've read a lot of your statements and um, uh, I must say that um, at best, Wayne, uh, a lot of things you say uh, contradict other things that you say. But let me just say, you have, I'm looking at a statement you've made about discussing whether or not reform, asking whether reform is sustainable in a speciesist world, or does it depend on institutions and actors that have an interest in undermining our movement's momentum. That completely ignores the fact that the institutions, in many ways, particular institutions, are irrelevant. Because, I mean, it, the, the problem is the property status of animals. That's why animal welfare reform fails. That is why it fails. That's why it necessarily fails. You support welfare reform. You support these big organizations. You support single-issue campaigns. I mean, you are just another new welfare group. And again, Wayne, I don't, I mean, you know, so what? There's one more, one less. doesn't matter to me. But what, what concerns me is your organization is actually even more reactionary than these other organizations because you have an absolute hostility to veganism. I mean, you write things about how veganism is the problem. Advocating veganism is the problem that is it's pushing us back. So you don't see that you're attempting to, quote, build bridges, end quote, with these large welfarist corporations is a problem. What you see a problem is is that advocating veganism. I wanted to say one thing about your analogy. Because I've seen, I saw you write something about that before, or, or, or one of your, your, your uh, members, about the slavery, the regulation of slavery. Um, first of all, the problem with what was going on with people who were saying, don't buy certain sorts of cotton, is that they had made a decision as, an inst as, a, as a strategic matter to not oppose slavery and to just oppose products that were made by slaves. When the big, this is not analogizable to what we're doing with veganism because with veganism, the product is the animal, okay? It's not made by the animal. It's made from the animal. So unlike the situation you were describing where people are saying, let's not oppose slavery directly. Let's just turn this into a consumerist movement. That's not what we're doing. That is what some of the large welfare organizations that you seek to build bridges with, that's what they do. They t I, I agree with you. They turn it into a consumerist issue to some degree or to a considerable degree because they are into Peter Singer's view of animal liberation, again, something that you share, and they basically take the position it's, it's how we treat them, not that we use them at all. And so, sure. what you know, and just several seconds ago when you were answering Bob's question, you were talking about how these, you know, that... that that, that these humane uh, farms and whatnot are all nonsense. Well, I agree with you there, Wayne, but you know what? Even if they were a lot better, even if they were really ten times more humane, whatever that means, than they are now, I would still oppose them, even if the animals were treated beautifully, but they were killed and used as resources for, not, for, for humans. I would oppose that. You don't talk about animal rights. You talk about animal liberation. That's the language of Peter Singer. You talk about supporting welfare reform. That's, 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 that's welfareism, obviously. You talk about single-issue campaigns. 
You come out against fur. Wayne, what is the difference between fur and wool and leather and silk? There is no difference. So what you're doing is you're buying into the strategy of the large animal groups, but you're actually making it worse because you're telling people, don't advocate veganism, that veganism is a consumer issue. Nonsense, Wayne. That is complete nonsense. Veganism is at the heart, has to be at the heart of a movement that wants to abolish animal exploitation. It has to be at the heart. The idea that we're going to get people together at water coolers, that's a, 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 an image that I got from something that you wrote about. We have to have water cooler conversations. Well, what are we supposed to do when we have these water cooler conversations? Wayne Grunt? I mean, we have to have some content to those things. <laughs> so what, what, what are we supposed to do, Wayne? I mean, what, 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 we need to have... Grunting actually things. sounds pretty fun. What? What? Grunting? Yes, okay, perhaps. But, I'm just kidding, Gary, but I, I just think it's an amusing image. I agree. Killed. And you know what? I don't find any of it fun. But, um, but I, I just, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed by the fact that you've, you've arrived on the scene and you're making matters worse by telling people, don't advocate veganism. There is like nothing on your site about veganism. Nothing. If you I, want to yeah, say, I, you know, I really appreciate all that feedback, and I, I would have loved to have a conversation with you about how we can crystallize our message better. The one thing I'd say is that, you know, I know on your Facebook page you said yourself that there are some single-issue campaigns that are acceptable if they have a comprehensive animal rights message. In no, every wait, single one I of our demonstrations, I, Gary, I, I gave you a chance I, to talk. I, is it okay I, if I finish, Gary? Gary I if I could just finish what I was going to say, Gary, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. You can go ahead and every single one of our fur demonstrations, our circus demonstrations, and Bob, the first time we met was at a circus demonstration. But we agreed that at this circus demonstration, we were going to have an animal rights message. And that is the message at every single one of the, our DXC demonstrations, that animals are not ours to use, to exploit in any way whatsoever. And when we talk about animal liberation, we talk about animal liberation as Peter Singer talked about in 1975, not 2015. And the first sentence of animal liberation in 1975 is this is a book about the tyranny of human over non-human animals. The tyranny Wayne, of human Wayne, over non-human animals. What, what, and Peter, Peter has Singer changed a lot over the years and does Peter not actually Singer use that language any longer. Is so really Gary, not all that Gary, from Peter Gary, think, in 2015, Gary would it be okay if I just finished the thought? I'll just have a couple more sentences. So my point is, if you don't like the use of animal liberation versus animal rights, DXC is a decentralized grassroots network. All of our organizers use different messaging. As long as it's consistent with animal liberation and species equality, then we agree that they should be a part of the network. So if you wanted to take part in a DXC action and use animal rights or veganism instead of animal liberation, that's totally fine. But to me, this is mainly a matter of semantics. Well, Wayne, okay, are, 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 all, are all your members vegan? I'm just wondering, are, are all the members of DXC vegan? Every single one of our core organizers is vegan. It is a requirement to be a core member of DXC. Some of the people uh, who come Wayne, to our demonstrations let's, let's probably are not you. vegan, but we Quickly. don't know. And Bob, you yourself and your World Vegan Summit advertisement said non-vegans are welcome too. We welcome non-vegans, but we make it absolutely clear that at DAC we believe in total animal liberation, which includes, but is not exhaustive of, the idea that animals should not be ours to use. Excuse me, but Wayne, in 1975, when Peter Singer wrote Animal Liberation, he made it very clear he wasn't advocating veganism. He made it very clear he did not think that animals had an interest in continuing to live, and that killing them per se did not involve a violation of any interests that, 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 that were morally protected. Yeah, so the idea Peter, that, I think Peter idea, would disagree with that. Excuse me, let me finish my statement, yeah, Wayne. Sorry. The, idea that, the idea that that you're promoting Peter Singer's views from 1975, yes, you are promoting Peter Singer's views. They are speciesist views. They were speciesist in 1975. They're speciesist now. Peter Singer's whole theory rests on the idea that animals are different from us cognitively. They don't have an interest in continuing to live. They only have an interest in not suffering. We have to accord their interest in not suffering. Uh, significant or, or appropriate moral weight, but using animals does not per se violate what Peter Singer's, the moral rules that Peter Singer's talking about. That was not true of 1975, it's true of 2015. You talk about animal liberation, and animal liberation is a theory that is the foundation of the animal welfareism that we see now. So you accept Peter Singer's views, so does every other group out there, and none of them maintains that veganism is a moral baseline. Neither does DXE. I, I would just yeah. Sorry. I, I would disagree any. with your characterization of Peter Singer's views in 1975. But if you're right about it, then I then I'm with you. I would not agree with Peter Singer as you're describing him. I think his views but, have evolved over the years. But I could be wrong. And Gary, you everything you just said about wait, animal wait, consciousness wait, and wait, sentience wait. being the moral baseline for inclusion in the moral universe, I agree with you completely. So if that's our only disagreement, then I'd say you know. 
we're, we're just confused about terminology and uncertain about the, no, no, no. the statements this is made. Not, Wayne, yeah. this is not terminology. This goes to substance. There is a, the, the difference between my position and that of Peter Singer's is not a matter of terminology. It's a question of whether or not we can justify any animal use, period. I maintain you can't. He's a utilitarian. He can't maintain you can't. He can't do that. So basically, he takes the position that as long as we give them a reasonably pleasant life and a relatively painless death, then we haven't harmed their interests. I, I disagree with that. That's, that's, the, that's the, 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 the paradigm you're working in. Furthermore, this idea that, well, we're a decentralized organization. So if people want to talk about rights, if people want to talk about welfare, welcome to the animal confusion movement. If that's can can they talk about vegan? Can they talk about going vegan? Like, they absolutely can, and they do, Bob, and we encourage well, I, I have not seen it on one sign. I see everybody in the blue uniform with every sign, you know, uh, until any every animal is free or animals are not ours. But what are we supposed to do? It's not food, it's violence. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to go vegan. We'll continue on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. Continue on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com. On Twitter at Go Vegan Radio, Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden on Facebook. There are two Bob Linden pages on Facebook. We're talking today to Wayne Shun, founder of Direct Action Everywhere, and Professor Gary Francione. Um, uh, Direct Action Everywhere does not promote veganism and, in fact, says that, you know, promoting veganism makes it about us, not the animals, you know, the products we buy and all of that. But... I think, Wayne, that not promoting uh, veganism makes it about us. Uh, strange, hypothetical, vague theories and um, hieroglyphic sloganeering that really doesn't um, motivate anybody to take action. I mean, I don't understand how we cannot tell people to go vegan after every one of these slogans. I, I, I don't even know what these slogans mean if... Uh, if, if the following shouldn't be, then go vegan. You know, it's not food, it's violence. What should we do? Go vegan, right? I mean, I, I, don't, I really don't understand. You know, Bob, let me just, Bob, let me just say I, something. Oh, um, I, I, would, I would be willing, you know, if Wayne says, look, vegan is, I, I, the, the abolitionist position is that if animals matter morally, the very least we can do is to go vegan. So that basically it's not the end of the, quote, journey, end quote. It's the beginning. Once you recognize that animals matter morally, you cannot continue to treat them as commodities. You cannot continue to deny them the right not to be property. Now, if Wayne said, well, look, we agree with that and we promote that position that veganism is the moral baseline, that veganism is the, the, the moral imperative, but we've got to do more to get justice for animals and indeed for humans. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we link... Uh, animal rights and human rights with the abolitionist approach. We talk about the rejection of racism, sexism, heterosexism. Um, you know, we, 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 we present this as a full political position in terms of the, 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 the idea that rights, the right not to be treated as property, the right to be the beneficiary of the principle of equal consideration, um, is something that all sentient beings have. So if Wayne wanted to say, well, you know, yeah, that's the baseline, but we want to go beyond, we want to go beyond that, then I would understand that. I mean, whether or not I think it's effective to stand up and, you know, chant slogans at Chipotle or something, that, put that aside. Yeah, but um, if it's a baseline, you have to at least mention it, you know yeah, what I mean? I mean, if it's a baseline, you have to mention it. And so, and it has to be central to your position. And what concerns me about direct action everywhere is that, it's not only promoting the welfare reform and, you know, pandering to the large, the large animal welfare corporations, but it's also, it's, it's, it's hostile to veganism. I mean, I've got pages of statements here from DXE just denigrating and demonizing veganism. I mean, it goes well beyond the, the stuff that you get from, even, I mean, it's direct action everywhere. It seems to me to be a much more reactionary organization 
than even mercy for animals or compassion over killing or any of those other, you know, pale versions of HSUS. And so it, it fills another meat industry void, it seems, to tell you the truth. I mean, so Bob, yeah. do you think I can jump in here? I think Gary's been talking for, Gary and you have been talking for a while. Is, that, is it okay if I just jump in briefly? I, I just want to ask the question, do either of you know what the first sentence is of perhaps the most famous vegan book of the past decade? So this is a book called Skinny Bitch, and the first, and I apologize for the use of terminology, but the first sentence of this book is, quote, are you sick and tired of being fat? The most famous vegan of the past 10 years is probably Bill Clinton, who was not vegan for very long because he didn't care about animals. And so I agree with you. Veganism as a political principle is worth defending. And we do defend veganism as a political principle. Yeah, yeah. But the truth of the matter is in popular culture, so many people have used the term in a very different way. And I'm looking at the Oxford English Dictionary right now, which is known by lexicographers as the standard for the English language. And the definition of vegan is just a person who does not use or eat animal products. It's not a political principle. It's just a consumption lifestyle. Oh, so I think the problem I mean, here is so many vegans do not identify veganism as a political principle. And that's not a problem just because, you know, we, we care about this terminology or we care about our identities. It's a problem for the movement because if the movement is going to grow, we need to inspire people to take more action. And I disagree that veganism is a baseline. And I started out this interview by saying, Veganism is not the baseline. Action is the baseline. For the same okay, reason that if you see a dog being tortured right in front of you, you do not just not participate in it. Gary, let me just finish this one thought and then I'll let you speak. If you see a dog being tortured right in front of you, inaction is not your moral requirement. It's not your duty to not act. Your duty is to intervene and stop that violence. And that is what we're inspiring people to do. So, so you're going to run, that you're going to get, get... Wayne, excuse me, but how, what, what, are you, what are you trying to inspire them to intervene to stop? You have to it's run to the slaughterhouse and stop the line. You've got to save the nine billion chickens as they're... I mean, I don't, I don't know either, Gary. Um, we'll continue on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden with Prof, uh, Professor Gary Francione and Wayne Chung. Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com on Twitter at GoVeganRadio uh, for DXE um, members, uh, that's V-E-G-A-N Go V-E-G-A-N Radio um, and um, on Facebook, Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. If you go to the uh, Direct Action Everywhere website and search the word vegan up pops intrinsically moved. Uh, the main reason uh, consumerist advocacy is the wrong approach. You see it. Stop talking about veganism. Then it also says veganism is not cruelty free. And then it says how the go vegan message perpetuates the objectification of non humans. So I'm I'm really not finding anything positive about going vegan from uh, DXE Wayne. Um, and I, I think that before the break, Gary was, was saying like, well, what is somebody supposed to do? You know, I mean, uh, you, you say, okay, well, you want inter to intervene if somebody's beating a dog on the street. You have uh, 9 billion animals who are uh, being slashed to death. Uh, I don't know, do we go to the slaughterhouses and turn off the electricity or do we go vegan? What, what does until every animal is free mean to you and, and, and how do we achieve it? standing up in Chipotle and saying it's not food, it's violence. How is that any more, quote, action, end quote, than, than tabling and spending hours talking to people um, about why they should go vegan if they regard animals as members of the moral community? Why is that any more action, Wayne? I, I, I'm, I'm it's, it's absolutely not, Gary. And I think they're both very important forms of activism. But I, I just want to pose maybe a rhetorical question for the two of you. Have either of you actually ever been inside one of these places of violence? One of these hell holes. Oh, I've been in about farms. 30 slaughterhouses, Wayne. How many have you been in? I've been in probably about 60. And I've investigated many of them, not, not consensually, but in the cover of night. And when you've been inside of these facilities over and over again, not on a tour, not on a visit, but to identify the most terrible abuses that are happening behind these closed doors, there's something that changes in you. 
And I was in a Northern California Whole Foods farm just a few months ago. And what you see when you go inside these farms is an urgent and desperate need for action now. Hens that are covered with filth, dying, dozens of them already dead, laying in piles everywhere. Hens that can barely even breathe because the air is so filled with sulfur dioxide and filth that it burns their throat every breath they take. And when wait, you see wait, this sort of violence wait. over and over again, it inspires you to action. Because for every one that you save, and we did save a number of these hens from this facility, there are literally thousands who are left behind. Wait, come on. It gives you a let's, sense let's, of just how real this real violence here. is you and how important it is to take the immediate out. action. Gary, let me finish. I let you talk and I don't interrupt, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't interrupt me. It, it inspires you and gives you a sense of just how important it is to take direct and immediate action to rescue these animals. But this is Wait, not just an emotional reaction. A couple of because as a social... Gary, made, could I finish, please, Gary? I, I, I've been respectful and tried to let you finish. I just have one thought. Gary, I'm just about done. Can I just finish this one thought? Because this isn't just an emotional reaction when we say we need to take nonviolent direct action and not just settle with veganism. Because as a social scientist who has studied social movements, for the past 10 years of my life with some of the best scholars in the world, I can tell you that nonviolent direct action has the power to change the world. The Underground Railroad brought down the system of chattel slavery when free produce could not. Emmeline Pankhurst's disruptions of parliament, not education but disruption, brought women the right to vote in the United Kingdom and from the United Kingdom the world. And the gay rights movement made progress only when it was willing to take powerful and disruptive collective action. You have rescued Eric a hen or a uh, one, I literally have one sentence left, Wayne, Gary. And you have one sentence, Gary. Okay, well, well, yeah, Gary, look, Wayne, Wayne says he has one sentence left, so let, let, let him... So Erica Chenna, with a political scientist who won the prize for being the best political scientist in 2013, has studied hundreds of social movements over the past 200 years and has said that all you need is 3.5% of the population, at a maximum, 3.5% of the population engage in nonviolent direct action and disruption, and you're guaranteed to win. Most social movements win with far less. So all we need to do is convince two out of 100 people to go out there and, yes, disrupt the Chipotle, disrupt the Whole Foods, disrupt the slaughterhouse or a factory farm, disrupt all of them, and we will bring so much attention to this cause that the issue of animal rights will be on the New York Times front page every day of the year. Going vegan is, no is nonviolent direct science. action. <laughs> The social science, exactly. The social science studies that I've seen talk about 10% of a population, uh, and I'm, I'm all in favor of trying to get to 10% so that we can change the conversation. But I think, Wayne, you've simplified um, th those, those social science findings. But let's not. What I want to talk about is you've rescued a couple of hens, and you, you, po you, know, you post all this stuff, this, 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 this uh, uh, material that promotes your organization. This idea that you are involved like on a daily basis with going and disrupting. All you're doing is standing up in Chipotle saying it's not food, it's violence, and you don't even have a vegan message. You partner with organizations that send public letters to Whole Foods expressing their appreciation and support, including Bruce Friedrich, including PETA, including Farm Sanctuary, including Compassion Over Killing, including Vegan Outreach. These organizations support Whole Foods. Those are the groups that you think we need to build bridges with. Those are the groups that you talk about supporting incremental reform as long as it's sustainable. I mean, Wayne, what are we talking about here? And I'm also looking at animal liberation because, you, astonishingly, Wayne, for somebody who's been studying things for 10 years, you really need to read animal liberation. Granted, even here, killing still seems repugnant. An animal may struggle against a threat to its life, even if it cannot grasp that it has a life in the sense that requires an understanding of what it is to exist over a period of time. But in the absence of some form of mental continuity, it is not easy to explain why the loss to the animal killed is not, from an impartial point of view, made good by the creation of a new animal who will lead an equally pleasant life. There you go, Wayne. That's animal liberation from way back then. And you're telling me that, that, you're, that you use animal liberation because you agree with what Peter Singer said back then. Well, sorry, that's what he said back then. Maybe you ought to think about reading the book and changing the locution, because it's not a matter of terminology, it's a very important matter of substance. Gary, we can have a debate about what Peter Singer believed in 1975. I think it would be better to ask him directly. But the reality is we are not working with Peter Singer. We are not working with Bruce Friedrich. We are challenging them. I agree completely that welfareism makes people complacent, that there is no evidence that it leads to real improvements for animals in the short or long term. We also agree that the movement's resources would be better used with a stronger message. I agree with this completely. 
But I just want to point out that last year at the Animal Rights Conference, I challenged Bruce Friedrich publicly before 400 people and said that the humane myth is not working, that we are perpetuating this industry, we're working with industry, and that we need to challenge them. But the difference between you and me, Gary, is I challenge people publicly, but I also am willing to engage in dialogue because I think these people can change. And Bob, when I said you were cynical, I didn't mean you were cynical about the movement. I meant you were cynical about individuals. And Bruce is someone who spent 2.5 years in prison, who lives a Spartan lifestyle, has a beat-up car from 1970 or something, because he spends every moment of his life working for animals. And I do not think his motives are bad. And I think, Gary, you agree with me. And I want to point out that engaging with these folks, groups like Farm Sanctuary, MFA, PETA, has led to changes in their practices. Even in the past oh, year, PETA and Ingrid released a video. Gary, let me just finish this thought real quick. I'm almost done. PETA and Ingrid released a video about the humane myth. MFA released an investigation of foster farms showing that humane certification was a scam. Even Bruce Friedrich, Bruce Friedrich, your number one enemy, Bob, had a wonderful blog post just a few days ago about hum how humane meat is a myth in One Green Planet. And finally, Wayne, Whole Foods, Wayne, Wayne, the Wayne, biggest the offender, admitted their CEO, Wayne. Gary, let me just finish a couple more sentences, Wayne, just a couple more sentences. Whole Foods, the biggest per perpetrator of the humane myth, I think we both agree on this, admitted to the New York Times as a result of our work and our campaign and our investigation, their CEO admitted he didn't know what he was talking about. If we want to problematize animal welfare, if we want to problematize the humane meat scam, then we are doing it. And I'm asking you, Gary, what have you done over the past year to problematize the humane myth or to encourage animal rights activists to challenge it? I mean, I think we're having a lot of success. And when Pete is talking about humane myth, when MFA is talking about the humane myth, when Farm Sanctuary is talking about the humane myth, I think that's progress we should know. Wayne, Whole Foods is full of meat. I have news for you, okay? I don't know what you think you've done, Number one. Number two, as far as what people in the welfare movement concerned, I can document for you the fact that they have been talking out of, they talk out of both sides of their mouth. So you can say, well, Ingrid has attacked the humane myth. At the same time that I'm looking at a website from Bell and Evans Chicken where Ingrid is talking about how Bell and Evans has set a new standard for the chicken industry. So they talk out of different sides of their fundraising mouth. I, I, I can't doubt that. Indeed, indeed, I've been pointing that out for a number of years now. But the idea, what, what is this, this idea? What have you been doing to, to, to show that the, that, that, that the whole humane exploitation thing is a scam? Wayne, I spend every day of my life... We had an investigation life. in the New York Times, Gary. I'm sorry? We had an investigation of a humane farm that was in the New York Times that over 5 million you know people what, around Wayne? the world saw. We have, and we, we had thousands of people writing you know to us saying they were out, going Wayne? vegan. You know what comes out, Wayne? What comes out is that... You're attacking the idea that these places are humane. You're not attacking the use as you're not attacking use, you're attacking treatment. Just like MFA does, just like Compassion Over Killing does, just like all of these other groups do. You attack treatment. You don't attack use. The only way you can attack use is to have a vegan message. And you said it before, well, I copied it down, Wayne. I hope it's an accurate quote. You said I do not agree that veganism is the moral baseline. Action is the moral baseline. Wayne, I'm sorry, that is absolutely incoherent. You need to have a theory to inform your action. This idea that we don't have to go vegan, that veganism is an impediment to the animal movement, but we need action. What are you talking about? That is incoherent. Gary, what I don't think anyone who's currently involved in DHC thinks veganism is an impediment to the animal rights movement. I know there are some blog posts written by another organizer, and we do allow a lot of diversity of opinion within DHC, but all of us agree that veganism is a necessary condition to achieving animal liberation. But our perspective is just that we have to go beyond that. And again, Gary, well, I want to start with it, though. Can we, can we start with it? If a dog right in front of you, do you think inaction is enough, or do you think we have to go something to something beyond that? And if wait, we do wait, have to go wait, to something wait, beyond that, you, why not ask wait, people for, the, for what we should be asking them for? Action for animals instead of just veganism. Don't wait, let them be happy. That you, is action for animals. Why, why do you need, need to take action for animals wait, beyond we what we buy and sell the in our own personal lives? What, Wayne, Wayne, why do we need investigations? What do we need to discover? They're killing the animals. Whether they're doing it nicely or whether they're doing it not nicely, they're killing the animals. What do Gary, you need do you agree investigations for, Wayne? What do you need investigations for except for fundraising, Wayne? What you, do you need we, investigations for? We actually didn't fundraise out that investigation a single dollar. But, Gary, do you believe that you made this scam? Wayne, 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 Wayne. You're on radio now. Uh, you're, you're, telling me, you're telling me that you got no, no uh, donations for your activist stipends? As a we did not put out a single solicitation for funds after that investigation. Not a single one. 
Our 2014 budget was $4,000, which is $10,000, 10,000 times less than Peter's, 100,000 times less than Nick's dress. Because we trade okay. in inspiration and emotion, not in dollars and cents. All right, we'll have a few more minutes left with Wayne Shun of Direct Action Everywhere and Professor Gary Francione on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com. with Bob Linden at GoVeganRadio.com, Twitter at GoVeganRadio. And uh, early bird discount tickets are available through August 1st for the um, 2016 World Vegan Summit and Expo. Coming to the Bay Area, to Berkeley, UC Berkeley, next July, go to WorldVeganSummit.com, get your tickets, uh, and let's get together and uh, focus our vegan activism because the animal groups aren't doing it. Um, you can order tea online from Select Tea, supporter of the program, S-E-E-L-E-C-T, selecttea.com, and uh, check out the thousands of vegan products from naturesflavors.com, uh, naturesflavors.com. Um, it's uh, really an astonishing uh, conversation we had here. It seems that, uh, Wayne, you have confirmed your support for Bruce Friedrich and... Uh, um, the uh, the groups uh, with whom he is associated. What's what's astonishing to me is how you, how you support him when uh, you know. I mean, you're probably rescuing chickens from the conditions he's created with support, his support, farm sanctuary support, all these group support for um, the Egg Products Inspection Act, and uh, and rich cages are now the humane standard. So go rescue chickens from the conditions created by Bruce Friedrich. Um, Wayne says first. If our goal is network building, it's absolutely vital to emphasize that our model of activism, building a movement for nonviolent direct action, complements many of the strategies taken by other groups. Uh, if we are successful, as I fully expect we will be, our activism will make the uh, lobbying, outreach, and education that Bruce Friedrich does exponentially more effective. Wayne, as I've been trying to say for years, these groups are the meat industry. They are butchers. I don't know how you don't see that, and I don't see why, why you're not protesting against Bruce for the conditions he created from which you have to rescue chickens. Bob, the no, incremental I'm, forms of activism that, that I want to make more exponentially effective for Bruce are the same methods that Gary and you use, namely vegan education. That is a huge part of Bruce's job, and that is specifically what I had in mind when I wrote that statement. Bruce doesn't because use the I word vegan. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce absolutely does use the word vegan. If you look at Farm Sanctuary's leaflets Trump, and the compassionate uh, Wayne, campaigns Trump, they do on university campuses, he does use the word vegan. Wayne, and what Wayne. I am saying is nonviolent direct action, and this is not my theory. This is Sidney Terrows, a distinguished political scientist. Nonviolent direct action is the strongest... Is it more important to be an activist or a vegan, if, if you had your choice? Finish. And if we are confident that we can win the debate, our main objective as activists and as a movement has to be to bring attention to this issue. And with over 200 press articles about our campaigns and investigations over the past year, we have brought a massive amount of attention to this issue, and we're winning that argument. You're branding, Wayne, and I, I agree. You're, you're doing a good job of branding. I'm looking at your website where you talk about your groundbreaking investigations, and there's a big fat red donate button. So please do not say that you are not fundraising off of your investigations. It's on your page, point number one. Point number two, the idea that, you know, the, the, this, this idea that we can be activists, but we don't have to be vegans, is contentless nonsense. It is contentless nonsense. Did anyone say that, Gary? I'm sorry? Did anyone say that? What? 
that we can be activists, effective activists, without being vegan? I don't think anyone said that. What you said, I think Wayne. What, what we said, said is that to be an effective Wayne, activist, you Wayne, have to move beyond answer, veganism, Gary. Wayne, Wayne, you see, I'm trying to have a discussion, Wayne. I don't want to so. hear your speeches. I'd like to have a discussion with you. Fair and I'm trying to have a discussion, and I have to, I have to, I can't engage you. I have to wait until you get done. So please, let me, if we're going to do it that way, let me get done. What you said was, I, I, I do not believe that veganism is the moral baseline. Action is the moral baseline. That's what you said. That's a quote. Do you deny saying that? Because you did. So you tell me how that makes sense to you, because I think that is contentless nonsense. And number one. Number two, Bruce Friedrich, along with Vegan Outreach and all of these other, and, and Nathan Runkle over at, Man, uh, uh, at, uh, at Mercy for Animal Exploiters, all of those people, all of them deny that veganism is the moral baseline. They treat veganism as a way of reducing suffering along with other ways of reducing suffering because, like you, they are utilitarians and they focus on reducing suffering. Plus, unlike, they say vegetarian unlike, anyway. Nate, uh, we're out of time. Nathan Runkle said, I'm a vegetarian, and then he talks about vegetarians and vegans, all confused issue. Thank you, Wayne Shun, for being with us today, and Professor Gary Thanks, Francione. We're, Thank you, Gary. We're out of time. Maybe we can continue the discussion. Thanks for being with us today on Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. Go get tickets for the World Vegan Summit and Expo. WorldVeganSummit.com.